Hi everyone, my name is Amy, this is The Opinionated Woman, and welcome back to my series, Crafty Reads, where I go over the last five books that I've read while I do some crafty art. Um, this time, last time, last time we finished a piece of mine, I just added a little bit of um, text to it, it's up on my wall of collages right now. So this week I am going to be, or this, this, this version of Crafty Reads, I am going to be working on the backdrop for a new one. I want to do a bluey, purpley, grey kind of ombre effect with Copic markers across the surface. So I'm going to be doing that while I chat about books. This is again from my little square moleskin that has cuck paper copy. Um, <laughs> but it's okay, we're going to be adding on top of this, so that doesn't matter. Um, right. Okay, so the first book that I'm going to be talking about today is Hunger by Roxane Gay. I stupidly gave this back to my sibling before I did this wrapper, otherwise I would have it here to show you. Um, but this is a memoir by world-renowned feminist writer Roxane Gay, um, and it's all about her life living in a fat body, and what that feels like, and what that looks like, and how people react to you. Um, the way that she's been treated by various different people in her life, um, from like the uh, somebody on the street to her parents, um, you know, like all of the effects that different little words that people have to say about people that are larger and how much that impact has. And the, the reason, there has to be a reason for someone's weight gain, but she did have a very distinct reason for her weight gain and her family didn't know until like much much later just before this book came out I think um, so she was going through this like suffering alone um, and they were just seeing on the outside the fact that she was putting on weight and just hounding her to, um, to lose it and to get skinny again um, not knowing what was going on underneath, which is so intense and like she hid it from hid, hid it from them for so long She was all alone for so long like with this trauma and you know, It was a very hard-hitting book, but because of the way that she wrote it She writes in a way that makes it very easy to keep turning the pages and it's written in very short chapters like vignettes almost um, which worked perfectly for this for this format and I just wanted to keep reading no matter how intense and sad it was. Um, I thought it was fucking absolutely artful and I will be reading hopefully everything Roxanne Gay has if I can get a hold of it. Next I decided to pick up a, a newer book on the scene. When I see something come up on script that's a little bit newer I do like to pick it up so that I can be a little bit on the on the ball when it comes to newer releases and that's Beautiful World Where Are You by Sally Rooney. Um, now as with all of Sally Rooney's books, I've read her short story collection, I've read her, her other two. Um, it's very hard to talk about her, her books at all because they're about people. They're about people and their relationships to each other and the intricacies of the bonds between people. And that's what this book was. Um, we follow Eileen and Alice, who are friends from college, and they used to live together. So we get the past and the future, I mean, uh, past and the present, sorry, um, with Alice living by herself, like living as a writer, and Alice living in Dublin, working for a um, publishing company. Um, and they send emails backwards and forth to each other, talking about very abstract um, concepts of all kinds of different things. Um, to be honest, those bored me a little bit. Sometimes I would be, uh, like, I would zone out thinking about something else and come back and to be like, what are these bitches talking about? <laughs> um, but in, uh, so it, it follows, it follows these two women and their independent lives and their lives where they overlap and Eileen's relationship with their mutual friend Simon and uh, Alice's relationship with a man that she met in the town that she's living in now called Felix. Um, and yeah, it's just the intricacies of the relationships between these people, like like a classic Sally Rooney. Um, and I think she writes them very well. If you are a plot-driven person, just don't pick up Sally Rooney. You're never going to like her. <laughs> you just It's not going to work for you at all. Um, so if you, if you want to give... Uh, 
less plot driven work a try and you're not sure if it's your thing then definitely try out Sally Rooney but um it's definitely not some not a writing style that will work for every reader let's put it that way then I read I actually have a book for this one I read He by John Connolly um now I initially picked this one up this is a, a proof copy that I got from my aunt um and it's I picked up John Connolly initially because he is a thriller writer. He writes really great thrillers, really creepy, slightly paranormal vibe. There's like a whole shelf of them behind you right now. Um, but this is a whole different ballgame. This is the um, fictionalized uh, autobiography of Stan Laurel, of Laurel and Hardy. Um, and it was interesting because it's, it's told in these little vignettes. And he never really uses Stan Laurel's name. He just refers to him as he, which is obviously the name of the book. The unfortunate thing is that this technique got brought into the writing style. So he wouldn't use he for any other character. So for instance, they call Laurel, um, no, they call Hardy Babe. So it'd be like, Babe had a drinking problem. Babe was married to Maud. Babe did this, Babe did that. And use constant, uh, proper nouns where you'd need to use a pronoun like I know this sounds like an English class but that's literally what it felt like to me and I was like why why have you chosen to do this I don't understand like <laughs> because it, it started getting really distracting it was really really distracting from what I was reading um other than that it doesn't really go too deep into things it sort of goes think about like headlines and the behind the scenes of what's happening on the headlines that kind of thing um he had a crazy life, um, like he started in vaudeville, went into the uh, black and white pictures and then talking pictures after that. And he had crazy marriages, he would have these messy divorces and then remarry the woman again. Um, constant affairs, yeah, it was, it was very interesting. It also got to tell me, it, it got to point out to me because I was, I mean, other people might have been aware of this, but I wasn't, um, that Charlie Chaplin is a real creep. Um, he met this girl when she was 12 and then he basically waited around and I presume groomed her until she was 16 for him to marry her and he was a fully grown adult man freaking disgusting and I know some people will come and say oh it was the times I don't give a fuck I don't give a fuck that it was the times um, the times were wrong and that girl was abused so yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was an interesting read, but it didn't quite hit the spot. Just, I'm just playing with colours right now. Then I picked up The How and the Why by Cynthia Hand. Um, I've been meaning to pick up this author for quite a bit. Um, I've heard uh, Kayla from Books and Lala talk about her. Um, so I picked this one kind of sight unseen. And... I really enjoyed it. Um, it's about our main character, Cass, who's a teenager. She's in her final year of high school. She's a theater kid. She's adopted. She's always known that she was adopted. Um, she's got great parents, but her mom has a heart condition, is in the hospital. She needs a new heart. So, the, and she, at the same time, she also really wants a boyfriend. <laughs> and she has a friend called... Niles? Yeah, Niles. Um, and... Nyla and uh, so it goes into like this teenager's life like there's obviously a lot going on Sen senior year you know it's a big deal there's a lot of things going on and then at the same time we're getting uh, things from the past of her like in excerpts from the past um, of her birth mother um, being pregnant with her and her writing letters to Cass while she's pregnant and we get some info uh, we get those letters throughout the book um, and get to know like how Cass came to be, how she came to pick her parents, you know, all of that kind of thing. It's very, very um, intense, but really beautifully done. I thought it was, it was very well handled. Um, so there's a lot going on in Cass's life and she's wanting to find out about her mother and what happened to her and um, like, you know, who she is and stuff like that. And it really goes into the whole experience as a family and the, the the emotions that would be brought up in the situation because obviously the parents are going to have some emotions around their child wanting to find the birth parent and then the birth parent's going to have uh, certain feelings the parent uh, i mean the child is going to have certain feelings 
And then at the same time, her best friend Nyla is also adopted, but in a completely different situation. So it shows it from a different lens almost, which I found very interesting. Um, but it was, I thought, really, really well handled when it came to character development. It gave a lot of room for the characters to change their mind and to react like real people would, which I really thought was um, so well done. And it's the sort of writing that I'm definitely going to give another go. Um, it also <laughs> shows you that if sometimes if you make a decision, life is like, I don't give a fuck, I do what I want. Um, which is also interesting. <laughs> um, I'm not going to spoil it, but uh, yeah, I definitely, I definitely want to give Cynthia a hand. Um, another try. I really liked it. Um, and finally, for this, uh, for this crafty reads, we have not such a good one, um, and that is such a quiet place by Megan Miranda. Um, now I've read one of hers before um, and I liked it so I was like okay let me give her, her another go. She writes domestic thrillers and some of these domestic thrillers I really feel like I should like. Like exactly what happened in this book. There was good stuff. There was good stuff happening. Like I liked the character development. I liked the way we were getting an insight into these people's past and futures. It's set in this tiny little private suburb called Hollow's Edge and everybody knows everybody they've got a neighborhood watch like bulletin board you know it's that kind of neighborhood um there are a couple of inconsistencies that confuse me a little bit with that like there are two guys who lived in that suburb who worked as janitors at the nearby college and that doesn't make sense when it comes to like how would they be living in this Lani like private suburb like how would they afford that you know so like the the sort of <clears throat> class divide would have been a bit more um it wasn't quite so realistic because that wouldn't really happen so we're following harper who's the main character and she's in her kitchen and this woman ruby pitches up at her door so we know something's happened with ruby but we don't know what initially um we find out that ruby went to jail for murdering one of their of uh, two of their neighbors but she got exonerated um, like the, the sentence got thrown out, she's back. Didn't tell Harper that she was coming back. So everybody's not actually quite sure what happened with Ruby, whether she was um, guilty or not, and all of that kind of thing. And people are, you know, acting very offish, lots of like peeking behind curtains, whispering behind each other's back, all of that kind of thing. And I felt like we were building up to some really dramatic things. A twist happened that I didn't expect, that I don't think is in... The synopsis so I won't mention it and that I was like oh this is interesting like spicy someone's trying to hide something Ooh, um and in the end the way that the way that the ending was rationalized the way that we found out what really happened to in in, in like a host of different murders didn't make sense to me and it was so unresolved that I was just like <sighs> The main character came to a conclusion that something happened and then automatically cool that's that's gospel like she says this happened therefore that's what happened there's no actual proof there's no oh i have a suspicion that this is happening let's go investigate which i would have been up for no it was just like this is this is it this is like law even though there was nothing nothing backing her up so yeah it was a very lackluster ending it didn't make much sense to me and I don't know if I'm going to be giving Megan Miranda another go. She might go into my one last try um, list of authors for me to give another go because, yeah, I found her very disappointing. Um, and with that, we've done another Crafty Reads. I always wonder if I'm going to struggle to talk in these things and I found that this technique is just working so much better than and I practice it a little bit in the shower, maybe. Um, I've, I've just been working on different pen textures and stuff trying to get this um, sort of ombre effect. I've been using a drier end of the blue marker across the grey to sort of blend things together and I think it's coming out cool. Um, so I'll work on this again the next time I've read five books. Um, if you did like this, please give me a like, maybe a, even a subscribe. But let me know if you like this kind of uh, setup down below um, and I'll see you next time.